Hi, my name is Alistair Lee. In this video tutorial, we're going to set up an audio profile with Universal Voice and associate it with a meeting room. To start, I'm going to go to My Profile, and we'll need to create an audio provider. This is actually a step that hopefully you will not have to do. This is something that your Adobe Connect administrator has probably already done for you. And to check that, I'm going to go to the My Audio Profiles link and click on New Profile and use this drop down to select my provider. Now for this video tutorial, we're going to assume that your administrator has not created the appropriate audio provider. We've got on this particular account a number of integrated audio providers, Arcadin, Intercall, Meeting One, and PGI. But we're going to use Universal Voice to connect our Adobe Connect Room to an audio conferencing provider that doesn't provide integrated telephony, somebody else. And to do that, I'm going to go over to the My Audio Providers section. And we're going, to, we're going to create a brand new audio provider. So I've just clicked on the new provider link, and I'm going to begin by giving this a name. I'm just going to be calling it my uh, audio provider. We'll set the status to enabled. Next, we can type in a URL. And this URL is used if anybody has a problem dialing into the meeting room. Uh, you can provide a URL, or maybe it's a URL that you're using to give them shortcuts that they can use to mute themselves while they're in the audio conference. Uh, so I'm just going to enter a Connect Users URL right now. Uh, and next I can enter some dial-in numbers. Now these numbers are actually for display only. These are not the numbers used by Adobe Connect to dial into the audio conference. But these numbers will be displayed to your participants as they dial in. And for that reason we might have different regions. So in North America there's a 1-800 number and in different uh, parts of the world we've got different numbers and we can specify uh, uh, multiple numbers for different regions uh, as participants are coming in. We could also display a message saying please use voice over IP to listen to the audio conference if you didn't want people dialing in to the, uh, to the phone. Once you've set up all of your dial-in numbers for display purposes, you can use this dial-in steps section to actually tell Adobe Connect how to connect with your audio conference. So here we'll add a number of steps, uh, first with the conference number to help Adobe Connect dial-in. We'll call this the, uh, the conference number. And in this case, we're going to dial uh, or enter the 1-800 number that Adobe Connect will need for dialing into the audio conference. Now, if you're a hosted customer of Adobe Connect, this does need to be a toll-free number. Otherwise, we'd be racking up a number of toll charges on our hosted service. Uh, so you can enter any toll-free number there in the, the number step. Uh, next, we'll add a step. You'll notice I've got three different options as I'm entering these steps. The first is the conference number itself, which we've already used. The other two are DTMF and delay. DTMF stands for Dial Tone Multi-Frequency. This is the step that you would use any time that you need to enter something on the keypad. So in this case, we're going to enter the conference code. That's the next step after uh, dialing the number. Actually, I might want to choose this third one, which is a delay. That's in milliseconds. Um, and I'm going to put uh, a three second delay here. So this is the label. I'm just going to type three second delay. Uh, and now the value, because this is in milliseconds, instead of using three, I'd actually use 3000. The next thing we'll do is add the conference code itself. So this would be a DTMF step. We're going to add the conference code, so I'll add that as my label. Now the problem is that this conference code actually changes from meeting to meeting. This is not something that I want to hard code into my audio provider setup. Uh, the good news is here we can specify that this particular field should be defined by the host of the meeting. So this doesn't have to be hard coded into the audio provider. And then finally, after entering the conference code, this typically the need to press pound. So we're going to add that as our fourth and final step. I'm going to add a DTMF code again. This will be the pound symbol. Uh, and in this case, we'll actually just type in the pound si uh, number sign or the pound sign. So now that I've set up all of these steps, I can test my setup. And by clicking that test dial in, Adobe Connect will first ask me for the conference code. And once that's typed in, I can press connect. Adobe Connect will dial out to the conference number, it'll wait three seconds, then it will enter the conference code and the pound symbol in this case. Now I'm not going to do that here because I've just entered a fake number and a fake conference code, so this will not work. But you'll be able to hear, if you're 
have your computer speakers on, um, you'll be able to hear Adobe Connect dial out, you'll be able to hear it pick up, and you'll be able to tell whether it's successful or not. Once you've gone through that test, you can then refine the steps. If it wasn't successful, maybe you need to add a larger delay, or maybe you can shorten it. Um, and then once you're happy with the steps that you've got, you can hit save. So I'm just going to go back up to the top of the form here and press the save button. Now again, this step may have already been taken care of by your administrator. In this tutorial, we're assuming that it hasn't been. So we've gone ahead and we've created our own audio provider that doesn't apply to the whole system. Now that that's done, we can move on to step two, which is setting up an audio profile. This only has to be done once, just like setting up the audio provider. And then we can reuse this audio profile across any number of different Adobe Connect meeting rooms. We're going to start by creating a new profile by clicking the new profile button. And then from the provider drop down list box, I'm going to select that new audio provider that I just created. Now, because I just created it, I need to give it a profile name. So we'll call this Alistair's Audio Profile. This profile, because I'm creating it in the My Audio Profile section, will only apply to you. So it's not a bad idea to use your name as you're naming it. Now, there's another field here that may appear depending on whether the audio provider setup required some fields that were defined by the host. And if you'll remember just a second ago, when we created that audio provider, we said that the conference code would not be hard coded into the provider itself, that that's something that the host of the meeting would determine. And so now I can specify the conference code that I want to use. I'm just going to put in a fake conference code for the tutorial here and press save. And now I've got my very own audio profile. And I can continue adding these audio profiles. I can add a new profile for each of the different providers. If I've got a different uh, intercall number, PGI number, meeting one number, an Arcanine number, I can set up a number of different audio profiles uh, and then just choose which one I'd like to use for which meeting. I'm just going to stick with that one for now, though. And now I want to associate my Adobe Connect meeting room with that new audio profile I just created. To do that, I'm going to head over to the Meetings tab. And I've got my meeting room all set up, so I'm going to click on my meeting room. And I'm going to choose to edit the information for this meeting room because it's not yet associated with an audio profile. I'm going to go down to the audio conference settings section of this meeting room. Uh, and you'll notice I've now got a second radio button that appears once you've, once you've got audio profile set up. And I can click on that audio, um, that second audio conference button that says include this audio conference with this meeting. And this drop down list box will contain all of the different audio profiles that you've got set up. Now there's the one that we just created. So I'm going to choose that one and hit save. And now my meeting will be able to dial out automatically to that audio profile. Let's test that out. I'm going to go into my meeting room. It's going to open up in the Adobe Connect add-in in this case because I've got it installed. All of this will work though if you're using Adobe Connect right in the browser. This is opening up a brand new room. So this is the default meeting template. And I'm getting ready to start my meeting. So I'm going to go up to the audio menu here and click to start the meeting audio. Now that's given me a dialogue, a start meeting audio dialogue that I can use to control the audio. One of the great things about Universal Voice is that not only can everybody dial in to this audio conference provider that's not integrated with Adobe Connect, uh, but you can actually broadcast that same audio stream through voice over IP. That means that participants don't need to dial in at all. If they want, they can simply listen over their computer speakers. And so as the meeting host, when I start the meeting audio, I've now got the choice of how people should be supported in terms of listening to my meeting. Uh, if I keep the defaults here, then we will start broadcasting the audio so that people just joining over their uh, computers will be able to listen in through their computer speakers. If I want, I can automatically enable microphone rights for participants. By default, only presenters and hosts have the ability to use the microphone and speak over voice over IP. And I can give it to individuals through my meeting simply by hovering over their name. But if I want to set the default so that everybody can talk in my meeting, then I would click this uh, second option here to enable microphone rights for participants. In this case, I don't want to do that. I want to control my audio conference. In fact, if I want everybody to dial in, I might uh, deselect the using computers option so that everybody has to dial in. Could, I could do the opposite as well. If I want people to listen over voice over IP and not dial in, um, I, could, uh, I could take off this using phone option. 
Um, so I'm ready to start. This will fail after I start because I did enter completely fake information, but you can see here Adobe Connect automatically follows those different steps to connect to the audio conference. That way my entire meeting can be recorded along with the audio and I can broadcast that audio through voice over IP so that everybody can listen. This has been a quick tutorial on setting up universal voice for your meeting room. Thanks for watching.